Good morning. This is Dina Marie of Faith Moments with a Franciscan Moment on Mater Dei Radio. Throughout the liturgical year, Holy Mother Church, in her wisdom, regularly honors the lives of the saints in the calendar. Some of them are feasts, some memorials, and some even solemnities to help us reflect on the reality of the communion of saints and to remind us of the great lessons from the saints that we want to Im imitate the life of Christ. Well, during the month of January, we reflect on a particular event in the life of St. Paul, and we pray for Christian unity. And as we reflect on those two things, we have Franciscan Friar Father Dan Petit to join us back in 2024. Welcome back, Father Dan. Happy New Year. It's our first 2024 recording. And thanks for joining us again today. Oh, you're welcome. It's good to be with you. And Happy New Year to you, too. It's hard to believe 2024 is already here. Did I say 2022 or 2024? You said 2024, yeah. 2024, we are here. Now, are you one who sets uh, New Year's resolutions or do you do you kind of look at, okay, what can be different in the new year? Yeah, I do. I, I look to, um, like, I know one of the things for me is always to try to trim down, especially, you know, after the Christmas season, there's so many gifts for us priests when we're in the parish. A lot of people want to show love and they do it through food, you know, so... I try to watch that and be careful with that, certainly. Um, but there's always a few pounds I can lose after the uh, in the new year. But also, of course, I always uh, assess prayer life and that kind of thing and really try to double down on that. Well, double down is what we should be doing. And in fact, I know say, uh, Pope Francis has declared this the year of prayer. So I think uh, any opportunity we can really strengthen our prayer life is a key. And two key figures we're going to look at today are St. Paul and St. Francis. And an interesting feast that we recognize is actually an event in the life of St. Paul, and that's his conversion on January 25th, where we look at the conversion of St. Paul. You know, what's significant about this event and of St. Paul's conversion? Well, I think what's significant is how St. Paul went from, uh, if we're judged by his own writings, especially like in Galatians, um, how he went from a, a justification based upon observance of the law of Moses uh, to a conversion to faith in Jesus Christ as the Son of God who's going to save him. So his salvation is not going to come from his observing the Ten Commandments. Um, his Salvation is going to come from Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, who can save him. Um, because I mean, and and that really, it, it's a, it, it's kind of a subtle difference. Uh, we don't get rid of the Ten Commandments, of course, but uh, we do have that rich young man that came up to Jesus and said, "Good teacher, what must I do to inherit everlasting life?" And he's he he said he named him a couple of commandments. He says. Well, I've kept those all of my life. And then Jesus says, well, let's bring this from justice to love then. Now, go give everything you have to the poor, then come and follow me. Do you love me more than your possessions? See, now we're mm -hmm. in the realm of love. And that's where we limp most. And uh, Jesus really calls us to that conversion that we need to grow in love. <laughs> well, and we seem to hear a lot from St. Paul when you mention that about love. I mean, doesn't he write? And he's, you know, in First Corinthians, we have that beautiful poetry of love is this and this, it is not this. That has to come from that strong conversion. Right. Well, it really does because God is love. Um, we need God therefore for us to grow in love needs to take up residence within us and of course that happens through baptism the holy spirit is the love of god poured out into our hearts who is saving us and will raise us from the dead and maybe a, another way to look at that is we you and i uh, as human beings long time ago took out of ourselves what we can't put back and that's life everlasting. Um, 
I can't put straight in you what's crooked in me. I'm a dead person. I'm going to die. I mean, we all will eventually. And we can't overcome that. Um, but Jesus, the son of the living God, came in our bodies and he put back in what God could, which is life everlasting. And see, that's what saves us. That's what salvation is. It's, it's something we receive, though. Um, scientists aren't ever going to be able to overcome death because no scientist can put straight in you and I what's crooked in himself. Um, but Jesus can, because he's the son of the living God. And see, that's the conversion of Paul. It's a conversion to, uh, to faith in Jesus, not just as a man who was crucified, but as the son of the living God who rose from the dead to life eternal. Mm -hmm. and, We're talking uh, with Father Dan Petit, Franciscan friar on this, uh, as we prepare for the feast day of the conversion of St. Paul, it's a great time for us to think, when have I been converted? And it's an ongoing process, uh, Father Dan, if you're talking about a love for Jesus, this isn't one and done. This is a constant, a daily renewal um, of our lives that is filled with a conversion. Yeah, I think that's true because there's no end to the growth we can make when it comes to love. Um, and, and love is our greatest weakness as human beings. Uh, any empirical evidence that you would want, just buy a paper today and read about what we do to each other as human beings. Um, it, it, it's the proof we need. You don't need a whole lot of proof. You don't have to go far looking for it. See just how we can treat each other. Well, how do we convert from that, and how do we grow out of that? Well, the way we do that is by way of the love of God in our hearts given us by Christ. He puts back in what we took out, which is life everlasting well uh let's face it um you know we we tend to do these deeds of death that do lead us to go to death and see love is what lasts forever yeah. god is eternal and that's what we have to get on board on you know? i mean that's what that's what our whole life is attempting to do is grow in love you know? and of course jesus puts love on offer to us and part of our weakness a lot of times is we're just kind of indifferent to that. Mm -hmm. uh, so even our growth in love means responding to that love on offer in Christ, which is so great and powerful. Right. Well, let's go to St. Francis and what he had to say about conversion, about this love of Christ versus love of the world. Well, you know, it's interesting. I, I did, for this uh, occasion, I, I did go find St. Francis's first version of his letter to all the faithful in the church. He wrote a letter to all the faithful in 1212. Um, and um, it's a real simple letter, very brief. And it's chapter one on, on those who do penance. This is what you can look for. Um Oh, how glorious it is, holy and great to have a father in heaven. Oh, how holy to have a Holy Spirit, beautiful and ad admirable as our spouse when you're doing penance. You know, that's growing in holiness and conversion and love. And then chapter two, on those who do not do penance, this is what you can look forward to. And I mean, he says things like... Um, they forsake neighbors and friends, and these bear off and divide everything that he left, and worms eat their body, and so they perish body and soul in this short age, and they will go into hell where they will be tortured without end. All those to whom these letters might have come, we beg in the love which is God, that they receive kindly those sweet-smelling words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ with great love. You see, there's the conversion because we don't want to be um, dying just our own death without what Christ is able to be put in because then we die forever without that. You know, that's the thing. And, and, and so Francis is trying to 
say here, we need to get on board with what Christ puts on offer and try to try to grow in receiving that and responding to it. Wow. And, and, and penance, confession, having that regular looking back, turn, turn to me, turn, you know, the Lord is keep saying, turn to me. Um, as we come into a new year, this, this is the call to love, to let go of self, um, follow St. Francis's lead. Yeah, that's right. And, and of course, uh, you know, as you mentioned, uh, there is this, um, you know, the, 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 the Eucharist, for example, is body given, blood outpoured, and see what I can tend to become is the native disposition of my body without penance and discipline would be, it's about me, <laughs> what I want, uh, things I'm taking to me, my pleasures, my desires, I live as I wish in the body, etc., but see, what Jesus comes to do is minister medicine to us so that we become an offering. We become body given as well, just as he is in the Eucharist. And of course, that is a conversion. Like you said, that's not a one and done deal. But we need to continue to grow in that so that we become a gift with Christ for the salvation of the world. We become given. Right. Father Dan Petit is with us as we reflect on the conversion of St. Paul and the words of St. Francis. Father Dan, I also want to talk a little bit about Christian unity and the prayer for Christian unity, but we are coming up on a break. So do stay with me and let's continue our conversation in the next half hour. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> 